All right. Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Coach Chris uh, giving you guys a little Chicago Marathon Race Week webinar. Um, if you guys have any questions, I believe you can uh, post in the little chat box anything that you have, and I'll try to answer questions at the very end. But I'll be basically taking you guys through a um, whole bunch of information um, about Race Week in general and the, uh, the race, the Chicago Marathon, because believe it or not, it is here. <laughs> It is uh, coming up here in just a uh, few days. Um, so I hope you guys are all excited and ready to uh, have some fun next week. So we're going to jump right in. Um, that first slide you uh, see is the Chicago Marathon uh, start line. Um, and I'll make sure I can see this here. OK. Um, this is what it looks like at the start. So from the elite field looking all the way back, uh, literally one of the largest marathons in the world, um, 45, up to 45,000 uh, registered athletes, usually about 40,000 finishers. Um, so a huge, huge race, um, which is really going to get you guys excited. So if you're a first timer, be in for a ride. It's going to be fun. Um, but what we're going to cover, um, actually, first, I want to say that the race itself is really a victory lap. You know, it's really a time to celebrate uh, what you guys have achieved, both in fundraising and training. Um, and just like we had our superhero run um, earlier in the season where we had a few people dress up in costumes, uh, race day is really a day to celebrate you guys. You guys are our heroes. Um, the whole city comes out. I think over 1.5 million or more spectators come out. Um, and they're there to cheer you guys on because you're going to be our superheroes that weekend. So um, it's going to be a fun day for all. Um, our coaches just wanted to say thank you. Um, we've got a few of our coaches here. Um, you'll see us out there on the course, um, either running with you, cheering you on. Um, Kenya, Jennifer, Joy, Johan, uh, John Stender, uh, Alan on the second row there, Julian, Carol, myself, Coach Chris. Shelly, Marsha, Tina, Masumi, Linda, basically um, everyone and everyone uh, you can imagine that you've worked with this season will probably be out there at some point cheering you guys on. So, um, so Marathon, in case you guys uh, are curious, a few stats, over 70,000 people apply, 45,000 runners, but about a third of the field are first timers, believe it or not. So if you're a first timer, you are definitely not alone. Um, it raises over 15 million for charity. Um, the expo is down at McCormick Place. The race is in Grant Park, um, but it is a huge event. The whole city shuts down. The expo is huge. The race is huge, and race morning is huge. So there's actually three different start times. Um, you want to make sure you arrive very early, and I'll go over that. Um, there is a course time limit, at which point they have people go onto the curbs, but you can continue um, to do the course, um, but they have to reopen it to traffic. Um, one of the things that I like to encourage people to think about um, is that doing a marathon is obviously something that's very tough, but only about 8% of people um, can pace one very well in what we call a negative split. So the, the key to think about is this is going to be the longest run you've probably ever done, for, especially for you first timers. And so it'll probably be a slow run as well, right? So Always have that in the back of your mind to have that negative split mentality. Um, for those Chicagoans who also like to have a aggressive goal, um, we call beating Oprah or hitting the Oprah line of four hours and 29 minutes is a, uh, a goal that a lot of locals shoot for. Um, one new thing I wanted to mention this year that was just announced a few weeks ago, um, Chicago Marathon is part of the World Marathon Majors, uh, six uh, major events across the world. And they launched a new six-star program. So I included the link there. Um, and that's where you can go and claim your stars as you finish each one of the World Marathon Majors. They now track your progress as, as you do more marathons. So if any of you guys are doing multiple races in the future, it's a neat way to set some goals and, as they say, reach for the stars. All right. Um, the course is new. Uh, they made a few changes to it. Um, I'm not going to go over every little detail. It does go a little further north up to Sheridan Road. It doesn't go quite as far west in a few sections. It has a slightly new, a um, couple new blocks, but pretty much the same course 
um, down around downtown um, and Chinatown. And then at uh, one of the very last turns as you head towards Michigan Avenue, this is just basically small changes um, where they moved it about a block or so over in many cases. Um, the race director actually mentioned that um, they think they've gotten rid of some uh, of the smaller little hills, the bridges, so it might actually be a faster course than it's been in the past. Um, so that's an exciting thing. But a lot of uh, spectators, um, clocks, the production value is among the world's best. So you guys are spoiled. You'll have clocks every mile, every 5K, um, 20 aid stations. Um, there are Gatorade shoes in addition to the Gatorade and water that they provide on course. That, that's at a halfway point. They have Gatorade gels at mile 18, um, bananas. But you'll also have um, a lot of spectators just coming out and supporting you guys. So you'll see ad hoc aid stations, little kids handing out candy, oranges, um, pretzels, chips. Uh, the whole city shuts down and comes out. So it's a pretty, pretty exciting course um, going through over 29 different neighborhoods. So very, very cool, very, very fun. But now we're heading into race week. So a couple key things you want to think about doing. Um, now that you're in your taper and you want to get well rested, try to plan and schedule more sleep. Try to make sure you hydrate well, especially a couple days out. Even if it is a cooler race day, we want to be well hydrated. Um, eat smart, which generally means eating a little bit more in terms of carbohydrates, uh, carbo loading, um, but also start to cut down on fiber um, the, the two days before the race. That just helps um, keep your GI system um, finely tuned and hopefully avoid uh, distress on race morning. Um, also plan your gear. Try to do nothing new. If you're running this weekend, wear exactly what you plan to wear on race day. Dial everything in. Make sure you've got no little spots where you have chafing or anything like that. Um, also, as you get towards the end of the week, hit the expo early. Try to go on Friday instead of Saturday if you can, um, so that on Saturday you can just stay off your feet. Um, on race day, like I said, it's a victory lap, so focus on just having fun, smiling. Um, Another thing that can help, though, too, is if you do have family or friends who are coming out and, and cheering you on, uh, talk to them. Uh, plan out maybe where they're going to be so you can look for them. Um, it can be very easy to miss people. Um, it's a wide street on the whole course. Um, it's uh, Depending on what side of the street you run on, you may want to coordinate that ahead of time so you can spot them. Um, they can also download an app to track you. Um, so plan, plan a few things out so you're not wasting time uh, the night before, trying to stress about all the little details. Do all of that uh, well in advance if you can. Um, we've got a map here also of the expo. Um, so our T2 booth is pointed out here, booth number 146. Um, stop by. Um, after you uh, pick up your packets, you'll be in that whole expo area. Um, you'll want to uh, swing by. Our coaches will be there throughout. Our staff will be there throughout to get any last minute needs. Um, we'll have things there. We can answer any questions that you guys have. Um, so make sure you plan that. The expo is big. It does take a while to get down there. So definitely budget plenty of time, um, at least an hour, maybe more. Um, look at the public transportation options as well. Um, don't forget your photo ID and your confirmation ticket that was sent in the mail. Um, you can also look it up online. Um, but you can't pick up packets for other people. Each person has to do that by themselves. So um, make sure you know that and you plan your time to get down there. Um, also, you can verify your bib and um, let us know what your bib number is so that we can track you. So if you can, stop by our T2 booth. Let us know your bib number. Um, let us know your emergency contact info as well, just in case you have friends and family. Um, and in case something did happen or who knows what, you get injured, you need help, you need somebody to pick you up, um, we want to know who your emergency contact info is. Um, also provide, if you can, your corral number and your predicted finish time. Um, we make a little spreadsheet so that we can plan out um, and help you guys figure out who else is going to be starting um, with you. Um, so it makes the race morning a lot less nervous when you have your friends, um, fellow coaches and whatnot around you. So if you fill out that link, um, we'll be posting this throughout the week going into uh, race day. As a reminder, um, let us know what corral you're in um, and let us know what you think your finish time is going to be, and that way it will help us track you. Um, and you can ask us questions um, at the booth as well. 
Um, if you do, for some reason, get a red card in your packet, that basically means they don't give you your bid right away. You do need to complete your fundraising first before you can pick up your bids. So um, you just have to bring that over to the T2 booth, um, take care of that, and then they will give you your bids. So make sure do those final fundraising pushes this week. Um, tell people how excited you are to do the race, you know, post photos of your race ticket or um, your last couple training workouts. Um, so uh, there is going to be new this year also, I want to mention uh, security at the expo. Um, so they are going to be doing some bag screening. So if you do come in with a big piece of luggage or a big backpack, expect to have a little bit of extra time needed to get into the expo. Um, very similar to what it's like on race morning to get into the race site. If you bring any bags, they need to inspect them. Um, so they'll be doing metal detector wanding and, and things like that. So just make sure uh, if you can uh, come to the expo without a lot of extra baggage and you'll be able to get in real quick. But if you do bring a backpack, just plan that they'll probably need to check through that. Um, all right, so now the race, the exciting start. Um, that's the start line as people cross the uh, start line and start heading up a slight uphill ramp up Columbus. Um, lots of spectators, um, a lot of athletes, a lot of adrenaline, um, a lot of excitement, um, and they space it out every couple of minutes. So every corral gets its own kind of mini start um, as the day unfolds. And a couple of things, uh, always be ready for anything. Um, we've trained in a lot of different conditions but Chicago weather can vary quite a bit. Um, we've seen everything from 30 degrees to 90 degrees. Um, typically it's 46 to 65. I think this year it looks like it's gonna be right around that. So good cooler temperatures, um, might be a little windy, there might be a slight drizzle, um, but we'll know once we get closer to uh, race day for sure. But check the forecast. Um, the early morning temperatures can be very cool and especially if it's windy, you can get cold. Um, so we do recommend typically to bring um, extra layers. Um, a lot of people will bring a long sleeve shirt that they then toss off to the side. They actually donate all that um, to, uh, to the homeless. So don't feel bad if you bring extra layers that you shed. Um, some folks like to bring ponchos or take a garbage bag and just poke a hole at the bottom of it and wear it um, to protect you from the wind. It's something that's easy, easily disposed of. Um, but plan that. Some people like arm warmers, take a long tube socks, cut a hole in them. You can use those as arm warmers. Um, but definitely pay attention to the weather and make sure you are ready for anything. Um, but race morning, this is a little, good little schedule to do. Um, try to wake up early, set an alarm, um, eat your breakfast, plan how much time it's going to take you to come to our meetup location. And we have a special a uh, whole venue set up for you guys. Um, we call it T2HQ, T2 Headquarters, and it's at the Roosevelt Center at 501 South Wabash. It's kind of a big auditorium or a gymnasium space. Um, and we want you guys to meet there with us early so we can help you with anything, um, help get you pumped up, take some team photos. We also have your own VIP gear check. Um, and you can leave your stuff there so that you can go through the security lines a lot quicker at the race site, which is just two blocks away. Um, we'll also have snacks, hydration, um, think about what you might want to eat in the hour or two before the race. Um, we've got bathrooms there, so you don't have to worry about using porta potties and standing in long lines. If it's cold out, you'll be able to stay warm with us. Um, so plan all of that out. Um, and then around 6.15 is when we're going to start to take a team photo, um, provide some final tips, and then we will start heading people off as groups based on each wave. Um, so each wave is going to take off separately from there. Each coach um, will guide a different wave in. Um, so 6.15, we'll do the talk. Um, around 6.45, we will send the first wave in, um, and we'll walk over to the race start, go through the security lines. If anybody needs to do a last-minute porta potty stop or hit the on-site gear check for anything, um, you'll be able to do that, but it's important to get there early. Um, the race actually recommends that people get to the race site about two hours before the start time. Um, but if you know where you're going and you've got someone helping you, it's, you don't need quite that much time. But the corrals do close about 15 minutes before the start time. So if you're not in your corral um, by that point, you'll have to go into the back of your wave. So you don't want to miss that. Generally, we tell people you want to plan to get into your corral at least 
25 minutes before your start time um, just because there's a mad rush and a lot of crowding um, and it can be tough to get into your corral um, when you're fighting through the crowd. So definitely plan to get there early, early, early. Um, 710 is when we'll move wave two, 745 is when we'll have wave three head over. Um, and then T2HQ will open up to friends and family after that. So if you have friends and family that want to come hang out, if it's cold out, if they come spectate for the first mile or two, and then they want to come and, and have some place to hang out um, to wait for you after you finish, um, they can come and hang out there all day as well. And we'll keep that party going until 4.30 p.m. when we begin to shut things down. Um, but it's a great location. You can see the little map there. It's just two blocks from the main gates to get onto the race site. Public transportation everywhere. Um, red line, all the CTA stations, all the buses are pretty much all within about a block um, of where, a block or two of where we have our meetup at T2HQ. So um, definitely plan to come there. It makes your race day um, pretty awesome as well, just being there with everybody else. So uh, for spectators, um, that athlete list that we, we ask you to put your bib number in and your start corral is also something you can share with friends and family. It actually calculates what time of day you'll be hitting various checkpoints. So it can give your spectator crew an idea of when to expect you at different points. Um, there is online tracking. They have this website. It'll be on the, the main Chicago Marathon website. It's on the app. It's also on this real-time runner tracking website. Um, so make spectating easy, so make sure your spectators know about that. Um, also for you, make sure that you smile for our T2 photographers. They'll be out there on the course trying to get some great photos of you. Um, my favorite one is right as you uh, head down State Street at like mile one, um, right in front of the Chicago Theater. Usually we have our T2 photographer off to the right-hand side of the road to get a nice photo of you with the Chicago Theater behind, um, behind you, but there's great spots that they camp out. So keep looking, keep smiling. Um, at mile seven and a half is also uh, where we pass near FFC East Lakeview and we'll have a T2 cheering station there. Um, lots of energy, lots of fun. So make sure you are uh, keeping your eyes out for that. Um, on the final stretch too, um, which is about a mile and a half from the finish, um, Michigan Avenue and Cermak is where we'll have another T2 specific cheering station. but You'll see pockets of us all over the place cheering you on, um, our other athletes, our, our supporters. Um, so just make sure your spectators know about the app and there's also a guide on the website for them. Um, and if you have friends and family who are worried about you or you, you know, if some of you might have like a nagging injury or worried you might have to drop out, they do have the American Red Cross, the medical stations at all the aid stations and they have a hotline number um, they can call to find out which aid station uh, you are at. So if something ever does happen, um, they can quickly connect you um, with friends and family or friends and family with you. So, um, all right, let's hit the next slide. Um, I'll get to the questions at the very end as well. Um, I'm just going to read this real quick. Yeah, I'll, I'll uh, get into that at the very end here. Um, the one thing I do want to mention for spectators, though, is they do have limited access to the race site, and that's why we have the T2HQ. Um, they cannot get into the race site in the morning anywhere. Uh, Grant Park is completely off limits to spectators. Um, only athletes can get in. Um, so uh, as they come, um, if you're planning to meet uh, after the race, they can get through some of the security gates to get closer. Um, but they still can never get uh, close to like Buckingham Fountain or anything like that. There's a post-race party area called the 27th Mile. There's also a runner reunite area, which this year is on Columbus Avenue. So it might be good to, to mention if you have someone who's going to meet you after, after you cross the finish, um, coordinate where they should meet you. Um, if you want, the easiest thing to say is just meet me at T2HQ um, because that's where we will be. And the quickest exit to get there is going to be on Harrison Street. So you can see the little arrow that we have mapping out that route. So that's something that, that can help. You know, after you do 26.2 miles, the last thing you want to do is have to go a lot further. Um, but generally, you do have to anticipate that you will be walking at least another mile after you finish. And they do that intentionally because if you just stop, you're definitely going to cramp up. So you do need to kind of keep walking, keep moving a little bit. Um, but we, with T2HQ, we have it as pretty much as close as we can possibly get 
um, to the race site. So it makes it easy for you guys just to walk back and then have a nice warm place uh, to recover after the race. Um, but just plan all that out with your friends and family. If you are going to finish very, very late, um, we also have uh, with Fitness Formula Clubs our FFC South Loop location. Um, and that's going to have an indoor place. You can do gear check, we'll have food, snacks, and everything there. So if for some reason the race takes longer than you anticipate, you think you're going to not be able to get to T2HQ um, after 4 or 4.30, just know that you can get to our South Loop location. Um, if we're going to move anything that's left to T2HQ over there, um, I will actually be there probably until after, well, after 5 o'clock until we know everyone is finished. So. Um, you will have us out there. Don't worry about that. All right. Um, so the athlete tracker, uh, just basically put your name on there, put your uh, corral and your bid number, and then what time, if you know roughly how long the, the race will take you, just put in your finish time, and it'll calculate your pace. It'll calculate the time of day at all the different mile marker points. Um, it can be something that you'll want to share with friends and family. But also, as we get closer to race day, take a look at it to see who else is going to be alongside you and plan to maybe coordinate and go into the corral with your friends. Um, makes those first couple miles pretty awesome if you've got some uh, fellow teammates to hang out with, um, both in the start corral and uh, to pace the first few miles, too. So you might find somebody who's running your exact same pace that you can run the whole race with, in fact. So um, this is a good checklist as well. If you like checklists, this can be very handy. Um, Make sure that you maybe print this out, um, go through it the day before, especially as you're putting all your stuff together. You know, don't forget your race bib. I think every year there's somebody who forgets their race bib, and that's a panic. Um, it can be chaotic, but usually um, the race can help get a backup bib. Um, but it is very important that that should be the first thing. You should pin it on your shirt. Um, have it next to your bed, uh, under your cell phone, wherever you need to put it so you don't forget it. Um, make sure you got the safety pins, although we'll have some at T2HQ. Um, if you have a hydration belt, don't forget that. Um, your ID, if you want to get the beer at the post-race party. Um, uh, your running shoes, sometimes I like to recommend bringing an extra pair of shoes and socks so that after the race you can change out of some wet shoes and socks into some nice clean ones or some flip-flops, something comfy. Um, tech shirts and clothes to change into um, would also be a good idea. Um, body glide or some lubricant. Um, you know, cover every little spot that you think you might get some chafing, um, blister band-aids, um, your watch, make sure your watch is fully charged, um, make sure you've got your heart rate monitor, if you're using a heart rate monitor, make sure you've got all your nutrition. Um, we do have showers at T2HQ, so you could also bring a towel if you want, if you want to plan to uh, shower afterwards. Um, we have towels at South Loop, um, but we don't have them at T2HQ. Um, so that might be something to add to the list. Um, any post-race treat, I like to always have a little snack that I like. Um, obviously, we'll have plenty of uh, food and drink uh, at the finish. Um, but really, if you have anything um, special that you want, that might be something good to pack. Um, make sure you have gear um, for different types of weather, whether it's that tossable uh, long sleeve shirt, a garbage bag. Um, don't forget your sunglasses. Early in the morning, it's dark, so you might forget those. Um, sunscreen, hat visor, um, all the post-race stuff, and then if you have any uh, music, anything that you want to run with. I usually don't like running with music. You've got millions of people cheering you on. You want to absorb that atmosphere to um, so make sure you, you uh, soak that in. Um, but no selfie sticks, <laughs> please. Um, that will only cause chaos. Uh, fueling tips, uh, make sure you are fueling before the race a little bit, topping off. Um, I usually say one hour before, you can have about 100 calories, two hours before, 200 calories, three hours before, 300 calories is a good kind of final taper plan. Um, make sure you've got a plan for what to take in during the race, gels, goos, whatever that might be. Um, note where the aid stations are on course that have those as well. Um, and then also have a post-race plan. What are you going to eat right afterwards? Always try to get some carbs and some protein in right away. They'll have tons of options as you cross the finish line and they have a uh, recovery areas you're walking through, you'll get all sorts of goodies, and of course a uh, post-race adult beverage as well. Um, they have a special uh, beer now made by Goose Island, I think called like 26.2 or something very cool. Um, also, 
Um, when you're hydrating, check over the course map. The one thing I like to point out to people is there are some big gaps between aid stations. So there's some stretches where it's almost two miles between aid stations. Most of them are a mile and a half um, or just one mile. But the first two aid stations come pretty quick, and then there's a gap of about two miles, I think, from uh, roughly, uh, what is it, uh, two and a half, three miles to just around five miles. Uh, so just pay attention to that. Uh, make sure you do get something in the first couple aid stations, even if you think you don't need it. Just kind of keep your system topped off. Um, you know, if you want to bring a hydration belt, that's always a good idea. Um, salt pills or an electrolyte supplement of some kind can be helpful. Um, you know, the main conditions, we've talked about this all season, is you basically just want to keep things in balance. You don't want to drink too much water. Um, you don't want to um, have low blood sodium. Basically, if you just drink water, 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 and you're not getting any electrolytes in. Um, so try to drink that Gatorade if you can. Um, and, uh, you know, if, if you're uh, going to the bathroom, that's usually a good sign, so you can always do that urine test. It's important also after the race. Um, I always encourage people after the race, people sometimes don't think about their hydration, um, but it's very, very important to make sure that you keep hydrating until you go to the bathroom. Um, it just helps your body get back to a steady state. And even in the days after the race, um, you want to keep hydrating very well. Um, some final tips here. Pace is smart. You did all the training. Now you just want to execute a good race. You don't want to run too fast. A um, couple interesting, unique things about the Chicago Marathon to note, though, are there are uh, underground sections right as you start the race. Um, the beginning of Columbus before you cross over the river is underground for about two city blocks. Um, so you will lose a GPS signal if you're relying on a GPS watch. Um, don't be phased by that. And as you run through downtown with the high rises, the GPS signals are pretty weak. So don't rely on your GPS watch. Plan to look at the race clocks if you want to the first few miles. Um, in the first 5K, you cross the Chicago River three times. So there are a couple little hills, even though it is a flat course in general, there's a good amount of uh, hills in the beginning. Um, they do put carpeting over the metal grating of the, of the bridges, but that's something to be aware of. Watch your footing as you go over the bridges. Um, pace it smart. I always see people who go out way too hard. Um, focus on the breathing rate or focus on keeping your heart rate at a specific range. Um, for those of you who have been using that during the season, or if you have questions about it, just let us know. We're happy to guide you. But that's always a good plan is to have an effort level that you think, okay, i got to make sure I stay below this. Don't let your heart rate spike too high um, as you go up and down those hills in the first few miles. Um, also a good thing, because of all the turns, run the tangents. <laughs> Don't run any more miles than you need to. Um, basically, uh, you want to try to follow a straight line as much as possible. I don't know if they're doing it this year, but usually every year they actually paint a line that's the shortest path. Um, and they actually paint it a couple days in advance. So as you're going around Chicago, you might see this line <laughs> randomly going across all the streets um, throughout Chicago. And that's kind of your guideline, if you will. Um, also, uh, watch. It won't be too hot, thankfully. But if it is uh, cold, you might want to run in the sun. If it's too hot, you might want to run in the shade. Um, so that's always something to pay attention to. Um, and then when you get to the finish line, celebrate. You know, the whole race is one big victory lap. Um, and a lot of times you do a lot of planning. Um, we do a lot of training, right? We get you ready. And then you're wondering, okay, what do I do after I finish? Um, besides celebrate, high five, um, thank your, uh, your uh, supporters throughout the season, have some uh, fun treats, party with the coaches. Um, sometimes it's good to plan what to do next. Um, so make sure after you cross that finish line that you have a plan and you think about, okay, what, what am I going to do? I've crossed the finish line, now where do I go? You know, know the route. If you're gonna come back straight to T2HQ or if you're gonna to go to the, uh, the, the 27th mile party area, um, take a look at that, make sure you know where you want to exit. Um, Harrison Street is the exit gate that's closest to get you to T2HQ right away. Um, and the 27th mile post-race party is a little further north and east. Um, so you'll have a little bit of a longer walk if you're going there before coming back to P2HQ. Um, like I said, if you have a late finish, you always have FFC2, which is just down on State Street. Um, so take a look at those maps, make sure you know where you're going. Um, but basically just keep walking after you finish. Um, keep hydrating until you go to the bathroom. Get some electrolytes in, get some protein in. Um, get a massage once you feel like you're well hydrated enough. 
Um, change out your clothes. If it's cold out, get out of your wet clothes right away. Get some dry clothes on. Um, they usually hand out those Mylar space blankets. You can put those on to stay warm. Um, and then just keep moving. Um, once you do get a chance to sit down, though, it's good to elevate your legs. Let all that swelling um, come out. Um, you've been on your feet all day. <laughs> put your feet up at the end of the day, right? Um, so plan just what you're going to do after the race. It's sometimes good to have that planned out because you'll be a little lightheaded and you won't think about it. Um, and then after the race, uh, the next day, the next week, um, sometimes you don't have anything to do. You have no more training plan to follow, um, so you don't really have much of a plan. Um, but we want you to, to think about that too. You know, stay active, um, get more sleep, reward yourself, take some naps, um, keep increasing hydration and protein intake for a couple days. Um, that really does help and is important. Um, you know, share your accomplishments, post photos, thank your donors, and then maybe begin to think about what you want to do after the marathon. You've got this great fitness, don't lose it. Um, pick a fall event, we'll have a couple options for you. Um, recover with us at FFC. We've got a recovery day and a recovery run planned the week after. Um, so take a look at those. Um, we'll have some fun events as well. Um, so if you uh, want to join us, um, Recovery Monday we'll have at uh, FFC Lincoln Park. We'll have recovery boots there. Um, Wednesday we'll have a shakeout run at South Loop. We'll have the recovery compression boots there as well. Um, but go to a group fitness class, go to a spin class, get in the pool, do some yoga or Pilates. Um, and then we're also going to have a duathlon. This is new this year. We're going to get our runners and our triathletes together at the end of October, um, right before our New York marathoners get sent off to New York. Um, and we're going to have a fun little bike and run competition to get you guys moving again. Um, so definitely stay tuned for that. Um, but try to avoid high intensity. Um, try to do a lot of recovery work using the foam rollers. And then after a couple days of eating anything and everything you want, start uh, eating healthy again. Don't uh, keep eating as if you're training like crazy. You do want to adjust your diet a little bit. So my final tips here, um, just a little checklist here. Update that athlete tracker with your uh, corral information, start time and finish time, um, so you can find out who your corral buddies are. Um, try to, if you can, plan to go to the expo on Friday, and don't forget your ID and your ticket. Um, they have shuttles as well, so take a look at the shuttle schedule to get some free transportation down there. Um, stay off your feet on Saturday. Um, I know Coach Kinnear's favorite tip, don't forget to clip your toenails. Um, you don't want to uh, have big toenails cause a lot of chafing or lose a toenail um, if it's too big and rubbing on your shoes. Um, get to bed early all week, set some alarms. Maybe remind yourself not just when to wake up, but when to go to bed. I always like to set an early alarm on race week to go to remind myself to go to bed early. Um, make dinner plans too if you're going to be eating out with any friends or family, people from out of town. Um, uh, restaurants do get booked up, so make some reservations if you need to. Um, plan your race morning nutrition too, um, so you're not doing yourself in by not focusing on uh, being ready uh, right on race morning. Um, write out a plan, maybe make a little checklist, think of when I got to wake up, when I'm going to transport myself to the race. Um, do I need extra layers, um, post-race gear, pack all that at least a day or two ahead of time. So you can just go to bed and not have to worry about anything um, the night before. Um, don't forget to download the app. You can already add your name in there for the tracker. Um, and then plan where you're going to meet friends and family if you're going to meet them. Uh, obviously, we would say just come to T2HQ to keep it simple, but um, you might have other plans, so make sure your friends and family know about that. Um, and that's pretty much it. The rest... Just smile, <laughs> enjoy the victory lap, run proud. Um, it's an awesome day. It's one of my favorite days in Chicago every year. Um, it's just so much positive energy around the city um, and it's just a great way to end the season. So I look forward to uh, seeing you guys all um, at the start, finish and afterwards, hopefully. Um, and all of our other coaches will be out there cheering you on. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to uh, post them. I'm going to go through those here, um, but we'll also uh, save a recording of this whole presentation. So if we went through anything a little too fast, you'll be able to get that from us online. So thank you, guys. Good luck, and uh, we will see you out there. Um, so a couple questions here. I'm just going to go through. Uh, what do you mean by topping off on the pre-race fueling? Um, so topping off basically just means um, make sure you're eating something race morning. Don't just wake up and go do the race. 
Um, basically means drinking a little bit of Gatorade beforehand, make sure you're hydrating. Um, you might want to take a goo packet right before you start as a way to top off and have a little bit of sugar um, and give yourself time to digest it. You know, as you're in the start corral, you can do that. Um, maybe before you head to the race site. So that three, two, one taper I mentioned, uh, about 300 calories three hours before the race, 200 calories two hours before, and about 100 calories um, about an hour before. It can just be eating a little bar, you know, whatever you want. Um, it doesn't need to be too much. You just want to always think about, and just like race day as you're going through the race, take in a little bit frequently, a little bit of sugar, a um, little bit of electrolytes, a little bit of hydration. Um, just try to keep your body in balance as much as you can. Mm -hmm. um, so are there certain points, okay, this question here, um, so I know someone wants to come out and cheer me on, but he's also very anxious in big crowds. Are there certain points where it is best for people to spectate places that basically aren't crowded? Um, T2HQ is definitely a good place for them to hang out if they want to. Um, it definitely won't be crowded, especially during the race. They need a little reprieve. Um, but there are some parts of the course that are more crowded than others. Um, usually always the, the intersections are typically crowded points. Anything near public transportation stops are, are crowded. Um, the first half of the course is 